Okay, so let's see if you can figure out how to solve this word problem. So here is the question. The square of a number plus 2 is 38. What is the number? Now, feel free to use a calculator, but uh, we do have a multiple choice question here. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 4, B is negative 4, C is 5, and D is positive and negative 6. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. All right, so one more time, the square of a number plus 2 is 38. What is this number? All right, so the correct uh, solution here is D, which is both positive and negative 6. So there's, uh, there's actually two numbers here that are the solution. Okay, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus if you're like, I missed you too, math man. What's going on here? Well, what we're talking about is something called translating a verbal phrase into an algebraic phrase or an equation. This is really important stuff in algebra. And if you don't know how to do this, well, I'm going to explain this in just one second. But uh, make sure you take notes because this is really, really important. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this and uh, show you how we translate this. Well, when you're translating a verbal phrase into an algebraic phrase, you literally have to go word by word. So let's go ahead and do this now. So the, okay, we don't need to really translate that, the square. So let's just stop with this word right here, the square. What does that mean? Well, uh, if I said, what is three squared? You would say, oh, okay, that's mean, that's when you put the little two up in the right-hand corner. Three squared is, of course, uh, three times three or nine. So you have to know what this word square means, okay? Two squared, of course, is four or two times two. So the square, well, the square of what? Well, you have to continue to read. So we just know that we're going to be um, applying this little exponent, this little two exponent to something. So the square of a number. Now, here, a number, this is where uh, algebra is going to save us, right? So what is a number? Well, we don't know what a number is, but we have these things in algebra called variables that represent numbers, okay? So like x is a number. What number? Well, it all depends, whatever value you want for x. But this is just a number. And in algebra, you can use any uh, particular variable that you like. You can use x, y, z. Uh, in this case, I use n because I'm expressing a number. That's pretty common, but just make sure you don't use any crazy uh, uh, symbols. Don't make your life too difficult. Just go with um, uh, lowercase uh, variables like x, y, z, a, b, c, or something like this that's kind of logical, n. Okay. But again, any um, uh, letter, lowercase letter, or any other type of symbol could represent a variable. All right, so the square of a number. Okay, so now I got this number, and now I'm going to square it, okay? Just as if I uh, squared 3, okay, the square of 3, for example, would be what? 3 squared. The square of a number would be n squared or x squared. Uh, what you choose for a variable really doesn't make a difference, but this is probably the uh, part that can, would confuse uh, students the most. Okay, so the square of a number we have here, n squared or x squared, however you want to uh, write that, plus, well, that's pretty easy. That is the plus sign right here, plus what? Well, plus 2, right? So let's just stop and pause. The square of a number plus 2, this is the square of a number plus 2. We're looking pretty good. Now we have this word is. Now, anytime when you're translating a verbal phrase into an algebraic phrase, and you come across the word is, this is always the equal sign, okay? So it's is or is equal to. So the square of a number plus two is or is equal to, so we're gonna write the, the equal uh, symbol there, is what? 38, and there you go. So now we translated this verbal phrase into a variable uh, phrase or a variable expression, or more precisely, an algebraic equation. Now, uh, it's up to you to be able to solve this thing. Okay, so we have n squared plus 2 is equal to 38. Now, before we continue on, I have a quick question for you. Are you enjoying this content? Well, if you are, 
please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. I will definitely uh, appreciate that. Also, if you need additional help in math, check out my math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I'm going to give you uh, some specific recommendations at the end of this video. All right, so let's get back to the problem. If n squared plus 2 is equal to 38, so the next phase of this problem is to solve for n. So let's go and take a look at that work right now. So this happens to be what we call a quadratic equation, right? So we have this variable to the second power. To, I don't want to be overly technical here, but this is a second degree polynomial. What you need to understand is this. If you have an n squared or an x squared, something like this, where a variable like abc or nx uh, to the second power, this is a quadratic, let's just go ahead and spell this out here, quadratic equation. And all quadratic equations, all of them will always have two solutions. Now, if you don't understand quadratic equations, I can absolutely guarantee that you're going to be studying these in your algebra course. Okay, now some of you have already studied this, so this is just a quick review on this stuff. But let's go ahead and continue forward with solving this quadratic equation. Okay, so what we want to do is get the n squared all by itself on one side of the equation. So if I asked you to solve for n, if I had n plus 2 is equal to 38, what would you do? Well, you subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. So here, uh, basically, you're kind of solving for n squared. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Then you can just always remember you kind of add down in a column manner. Hopefully at this uh, level of, um, you, know, you know, those of you out there watching this video, are already you know beyond basic um, equation solving. Now, if all of this right here is like overwhelming, you're like, oh, I'm gonna be confused about this stuff. Well, listen, that's good that you know what you're confused about because I'm telling you then, oh, you don't understand this, then you need to work on equations. So let me give you a couple quick recommendations before we finish this thing up. Check out like my pre-algebra course or my algebra course, right? That's probably your best bet if you really, really wanna learn this stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue forward. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Now I have n squared is equal to 36, right? 38 minus 2 is 36. So how do I solve for n when I have n squared? Well, what we have to do is take the square root of both sides. Anytime you take the square root of a variable like n squared, the answer is n, right? So if I'm trying to solve for uh, x and you have x squared, just take the square root of that and you get x. Okay, now... Here's the deal, though. When you take the square root of the left-hand side, you always have to take the square root of the other side. So here, we're just going to take the square root of both sides. We're going to get n, uh, square root of n squared is n, is equal to positive negative 36. So here is a really, really critical deal. If I said, let's just use a, well, we'll use 36. So if I said, hey, what's the square root of 36? And it had nothing to do with the equations. And if you said, oh, the answer is 6, you would be correct. This right here in and of itself is something called the principal square root, which is basically the positive um, uh, version or the, just the positive uh, uh, root for um, the square root. Okay, so we know that what's a square root, by the way? Let's just make sure we understand that. It's the number times itself. Okay, we're asking ourselves, hey, what number times itself gets us back to 36? So 6 times 6 gets us back to 36. So that's why 6 is the square root of 36. But that's not the only number, right? Negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. So negative 6 is an answer as well. That's why we have n is equal to positive and negative 6. But don't confuse the principal square root. So if you're just doing a bunch of problems and I give you this as uh, the question, hey, what's the square root of 36? And you gave me 6. That's technically correct. That would be the principal square root. But when you're trying to um, uh, solve equations, when you're taking the square root, when you're dealing with solving equations, you're trying to find the roots or the zeros of the equation, uh, you got to add that negative n. So n is equal to positive and negative six. Now let's go ahead and check our answer here just to make sure that we are good to go with our final solutions. So here is the equation, right? A number squared, all right, This here is the square of a number plus two is 38. The square of a number plus two is 38. So we're saying that number here is n 
is equal to both positive and negative 6. So let's just go ahead and plug in 4n a 6, and then we'll also check negative 6. So let's go ahead and plug in a 6, 4n. So that's going to be 6 squared, which of course is what? 36 plus 2. So what's 36 plus 2? Is that 38? Well, 36 plus 2 is 38. 38 is equal to 38. That is a true statement. So this is a verified solution. All right, let's go ahead and check negative 6 now. So negative 6 squared, guess what? Negative 6 squared is negative 6 times negative 6, which is a positive 36. So positive 36 plus 2 is 38. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.